Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling is in Brawl. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in Zimcat 4. And this time, we have the new mobile app tool called Zaps. So that's right here, opening up the cat, zimjazz.com, and we press on Zaps. That takes you into an information page about the tool, and you would press Tool to see the tool. There's various other ways to get there, too. For instance, under Code, right here, if we scroll down to Features, there's a way into Zaps. You can also find the Zaps tool down inside of Tools, right there. That will link directly to the tool. And under mobile here, or PWA and capacitor, under mobile, there's a new mobile page, which has examples of uh, Zim prepared for mobile. And here are features that Zim can do for mobile. There's information on PWAs and some examples. Progressive Web Apps, that stands for. And then this is a link to the new Zaps tool. As it says here, if you want to do this manually, you could do a manual installation of all of these files that the tool will make you. So we'll pop in now to the tool introduction page. A little bit about Zim. Yay! Now let's see. Zim is a coding framework where you can quickly make art, games, puzzles, apps called Zaps. So we're going to call them Zaps. These can be saved to the home screen of a mobile device and run as a an app without the browser bar and without internet. So you can see Zim Mobile for more information on the mobile features. That's where we just were. Click here for the Zim PWA tool, which we'll ask for information about your app, the Zim app page, and an icon image. <clears throat> and you'll receive all the files you need for a progressive web app, which is a zap.html. You would copy this code into your own app page. And we'll show you an example of that in this public, as well as examples of the manifest that it makes the service worker file, which is responsible for caching the code. The neat thing about progressive web apps is that they can be cached on the device and all of the images and uh, scripts are right there on the device as the app loads. And that means it loads really quickly or it, it opens really quickly. It could also run offline, so it doesn't need to be online. Now if it does need to be online for some data uh, then that part of it will be online, but perhaps the images and scripts can come from cache and still make the loading faster. The tool will also made, make icons from the single icon that you put in. It will make a variety of different size icons, and it will bring in any local or any scripts that were remote, such as CreateJS and Zim. It will make local versions of them in a library folder. It's a readme text about all the instructions as well. Now we go into the tool. This tool looks like the rest of the Zim tools. So another way that we can get here is under Code. Scroll down to Tools. We can use this now. Tools. And here are the other tools. There's Distill. <coughs> Here's Wonder. tools. Here's an asset list. And here's Zaps. So all the tools now have a similar look. Zim Zaps is a tool that provides a zip of files needed for progressive web apps, PWA. Upload the start HTML page of your app. And what we'll do is we'll parse that. The tool will parse that and figure out what remote paths you have and turn them into local paths. It will also 
add some things as we go. The tool will make a copy called zap.html. Rather than replace your HTML, we're making a copy of it. Zap.html has PWA links and code inserted. We're going to look at that. Replace your code with the zap.html code. So once you've verified that that seems good, you can practice with that, then you would take the code from this page and put it into your index page. Add the other files to your app directory and see the readme.txt in the zip for more instructions. Put in your company here. Put in your app name here. Or you can actually leave all of this blank and just say get zip. And what that will do is it will make a, an example file for you. Maybe we can try that. But that's the idea. You would put in your company and your, your app name there. Choose a portrait, landscape, or any in terms of your orientation. That will work on Android. On Apple, they're still needing to get to that part of it. Um, you would have to code in Zim to swap views if you wanted to handle orientation changes. Choose uh, the HTML file that is your app file. So then you would look for that here in your computer. If you have assets, we thought about figuring out what assets you're using, such as images and sound, but there's so many different ways to put those in there, including fonts and things like that, that rather than try and parse all the different ways, we just have you put in a path to your assets, such as asset slash, and here put in uh, whatever you, whatever your assets are. You can get this from the Zim Asset tool, but it will also probably be already there in the um, in your frame call. When you load assets in frame, just, just pass in the same assets there for the file names. One difference is something like font. You don't pass in the squiggly bracket source and font things. You just pass in the, the font asset itself. So what this is going to do is it will uh, know to ask for those assets in the manifest. Uh, or sorry, in the um, service worker, which will cache those. You would also choose an image for your icon, and that should be square, 512 by 512. And it will make smaller uh, a set of smaller images as well. I'll keep the 512, 512, but a set of smaller images for your icons as well. We'll leave this all blank and say get zip. There it is downloading a zip. Looks like we've tested it 11 times, <laughs> various times. So there it is getting the zip for you. You would unzip that and now I can show you the files that are in that. So here's the, the zap folder that you'll get and in there is a zap.html. So this is, oh, uh, looks like I did a zap with GenPen to see if that would work. No, oh, I did indeed. <laughs> of all of GenPen. <laughs> and indeed it worked. Uh, that's funny. I don't remember choosing this zap specifically. I wonder if um, maybe that's uh, an inner test that I had done on is that? But anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I would have preferred the default one. Let me go grab that zip. What's that zip with the readme? What's this zap? That's also GenPen. <laughs> Am I looking at the same one? So, a test. Ah, uh, it's in test that I want. So hang on, let me just undo these ones. And here's the test folder. These are simpler examples of just the defaults. Yeah, okay. Uh, my apologies. <clears throat> so we did test it with a more complicated app, and it still worked, that being GenPen. 
but here is the default one. If you didn't add anything into the tool, here's what you would get. Well, let's have a look at it. We open in Browser Plus or Browser. This is what it looks like. On desktop, there's no little message. So how this works is a message will appear if you're on mobile in a browser. If you're on mobile looking at the app in a browser, you may want to store that as an app on your home screen, your home page, home screen, on your device. And then when you load it from the home screen on the device, you no longer get the browser window in the device. That's the pro one, of, one of the problems anyway, is when you're viewing it in a mobile browser, you get the browser window. It gets in the way, you know? I want to run this as an app. I don't want to see the browser window. So this is a system to, um, to encourage people to, to store the app on their home screen. And it's, there's a, an acronym for it, add to home screen, A, the number two, HS, add to home screen. And they're marketing this. People who are making PWAs, it's, it's all part of the system, the HTML5 system. They're marketing this to people saying, hey, look, you don't have to get it from the app stores. You can add an app just from this web link right here. Here's, here's how to do it. And so that's what we've done is we've made a message that will show up on the user's uh, browser when they're viewing the app saying, store this to the home screen. When they load it from the home screen, we no longer show that message because they're already opening it from the home screen. When we're on a desktop, which we are here, a laptop, we don't show the message because we don't have to. We're fine using it as a, in, in a browser. So here's what the message looks like. Um, I'll just shortcut some of the, this is the stuff that's being added so that the system will work. Let me just shortcut through that right down to where we're adding the bit about the message. I'll just say dot show here. And there we go. That's that's the message. So your app on a browser would pop up or would, would load on a browser and it'd say, please add to home screen as an app. This is the symbol on Apple for that process. So the user would know to look up here in the little menu and choose Add to Home Screen, either on Android or on Apple, at which point an icon, the icon that you submit, would show up uh, on their home screen. And they would open the app from the home screen from then on. They wouldn't go to the app on the browser anymore. So this is a little test to find out what that looks like. Don't forget to remove that test when you actually launch the app. <laughs> and now that we've removed it, it doesn't show up here. And this is how your app would end up uh, loading. It would bypass that. So let's um, see what else happens when we add this system here. Where'd it go? Just a little atom glitch. Uh, here's the PWA. <clears throat> this is the stuff that gets added here. So here's a little message saying SimZaps, progressive web app tool, output from this location. It adds a link to the manifest. So here's the manifest JSON file. Manifest JSON file has the name of the app that you've provided. The start URL is set as an index page. That would be your app, the, the name of the page that you up, uploaded, probably uh, the index page. There's the orientation. And here are links to the various icons that are included here. The default icons look like this. Zaps. But that would be, that would look like your icon. So that's it for the manifest.
back to the index here. Various meta tags for Apple to be treated as a mobile web app title that will go underneath the icon, for instance. View, the viewport setting and various touch settings. You should have fave icons as well, but we'll let you go and get them. You can generate your own fave icons. There are these little icons that show up on the bars of things. The service worker. So the tool will insert into the code here the service worker call that links out to this service worker page. That looks like this. This is the cache ID. So it will it, the service worker is responsible for caching these items right here, the index page, the CreateJS and Zim files. Those have been brought locally, as you'll see here in the libraries. Right here, CreateJS, Zim. And here's where, if you added any assets, they would come in here something like assets slash pick.png, comma, and sound and anything like that. And so what the service worker does is says, oh, okay, if you try and go to those files, they're going to be cached here for you. So they'll work offline and they'll be loaded really quickly. The tool should put these in here for you automatically. But if you just ran the tool to get a default thing and wanted to add all this stuff yourself after, you could just add your assets and any other scripts or whatever in here. So anything that you're using locally, as much as possible, should be uh, listed in here. The tool, like I said, will add any images or pictures and paths that you that you add to it when you when you run the tool. We'll add them in here. And then some boilerplate stuff that you don't need to worry about. So that's called the service worker. <clears throat> the links to CreateJS and Zim will be adjusted to point to the local libraries. This would have, on your code that you submit, might have been out to the CDN, the full URL. To the Zim CDN, but now we're bringing them in local. Here's a frame call. What Zim does, it goes out and grabs a sort of a sample app, that, that little button. So it grabs that sample app, assuming that you're using full. Oh, one thing about the uh, libraries, make sure you're using Zimcat 4 and above. This won't work with Zimcat 3, so this needs to be Zimcat 4 that it's parsing from. So here's how it goes. Within the frame ready, it's uh, going to insert into here this new PWA. So that's a call to the PWA class in Zimcat 4. And the PWA is going to run the zap. And here's the function run zap. So this is inserted by the tool. All of this is your code. So it inserts it between or just after the frame.ready. It's going to insert this code. All of your normal code is there. And then there's the end of the run zap right there. So all of this stuff is your normal code that was that would be in your app normally. And wrapped around that is this run zap, which you can call whatever you want. If you change the name of that, change the name there. <coughs> There's a couple different ways that you can set this up to. So view the README. You don't have to do it this way. You could load your app first and then pop up the message after if the message is needed and then say call an animation. Or, you know, and, you know it's, it, there's a few different ways you can view the README on that. This will show a message if a message is needed. It will only show a message if it's on mobile browser. <clears throat> If it's being run from the mobile home screen, then it says, oh, I'm being run from the mobile home screen. I'll just run that right away. If it's being run from the desktop or laptop, it says, oh, I don't need to show the message. I'll just run that right away. So that's what it's doing. It's inserting a message only when it, the message is needed. 
Otherwise, it will just run this. And that's it. That's the tool that does all that, all that stuff. So we've tested it on lots of Android and Apple devices. So far, so good. Uh, uh, let us know how this tool works for you. The Zim Zaps tool. Neat, huh? And you're welcome to call your app a zap. We like, we like the name of that. It's quick, fast. And there you go. That's the Zim Zap tool. It takes place of quite a lot of code. So if, um, if this is helping you, then you're welcome to donate. Capacitor, which will get you on mobile uh, stores, costs money to use. Uh, it does get you into mobile stores. It's, it's some more steps involved. PhoneGap Build, which was around by Adobe, uh, has been discontinued. So it no, no longer works. This is why we've had to move. And, and their reason for that is, well, hey, you know, this is hard to upkeep this. Every time Apple changes their bloody store rules, you know, they got to make changes to their, their tool. Well, PWAs have come along. And so Adobe said, ah, you know what? Just use a PD, PWA. <laughs> so that's where they're at on it. And it's a growing thing. I think it will be good to, to be able to make apps bypassing the stores. If you do need the store, Android supports PWAs in stores now. So you can look into that as a trusted web app activity, it's called. Look at the Zim mobile page. Apple may be on board at some point. They say they you know, fully support PWA, uh, except for their portrait landscape. Or they, they, they support it in um, principle. They, they like it, and yeah, okay, great. Um, and hopefully they'll uh, continue to um, grow the support for that. So there you go. That's uh, the Zaps mobile tool. At what's bubbling at Zim? Uh, come on in to zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord if you want to talk about anything. Show us some examples. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Have a great day or night. I'm Dr. Abstract. Ciao.